Hello, <coughs> YouTube world, students, colleagues. This is Dr. Satish Singhal, PhD, Professor of Computer Science at El Camino College, Torrance, California. And I want to talk to you about abstract classes in C++. We're going to do three videos. First one will have uh, pure concept form description of abstract classes that will be mostly working through this Microsoft Word document explaining theoretical details. Second would be code based on this document. We'll write some abstract classes and show you how we can work through those. And third would be more concrete uh, abstract class and derivation from them. Okay. So let's get started. <clears throat> and in this video, I'm going to be reading some of it, although it would be better if I had a PowerPoint. But I'm very busy, so I'm trying to do the best I can. So I'm just going to work through this Microsoft Word document. <clears throat> so I have a video called Dynamic Binding Explained on YouTube. And there I show that a virtual function in base class and this class could be a vehicle class, can provide correct object and function name binding at the runtime when a child class, child classes override the virtual function in the base class. Okay. It is recommended that you watch that video before watching this one. And the video talks about virtual functions which have word virtual as the first word in the base class function header, child classes can override virtual function or any other base class function, but is the virtual function that allow dynamic binding at the runtime. When you do that, that will help you understand concept of virtual functions. And you need to know and understand that concept before proceeding to abstract classes, which have something called pure virtual functions. And by then you'll understand the difference between virtual functions and pure virtual functions. Okay, so first of all, abstract classes and pure virtual functions. The classes on the top of inheritance, inheritance hierarchy form from which other classes can be derived. They accomplish two main things. First, they model the behavior of descendant classes. Okay, so this is shown in the figure here, let's say you have a class called vehicle. Well, airplane is a vehicle, so I can drive airplane from vehicle. Jet is a airplane, so I can drive jet class from airplane. Proplane is a airplane, so I can drive proplane class from airplane. Vehicle with wheels is a vehicle, so I can drive that from vehicle. And car is a vehicle with wheels, so I can drive that from this one. So that's the standard inheritance. Okay. But sometime in a system of classes, all classes should have some of the behaviors to be same. Why is this necessary? Imagine that we write classes to simulate all kind of doors in the world, like house door, car door, bank wall door, French door. Well, what are the two behaviors all doors have? Well, we know all doors have at least two behaviors. They open and they close. So if we have a door class, how can we make sure that every class deriving from that door class can, is forced to show those two behaviors, that they open and they close? Because if they don't, it's not a door. So how can we enforce behavior open and close in all doors? This is done by a two-prong approach. And this one is not totally necessary, but we can add it. The base class could be such that we kind of don't need to instantiate it. Okay. And the reason for that is that I cannot go around the world and point to an object which would just be a door. Okay? Every door in the world will be a specialized version of door. 
it could be a house door it could be a car door I'm gonna not say it's just a door okay because every door will be a specialized version of general and abstract com concept door door is the abstract con concept and every door you uh, see in on the world would be a specialized version of it okay so the need to instantiate an abstract concept based class is not there i will never need to there's no object in the world that is simply a door so i don't have to instantiate that one because no real world object will match an abstract concept okay so let's summarize such non instantiable classes are called abstract classes they are never instantiated and they exist only to act as a base class that would enforce certain behavior on child classes okay mechanism to do that in c++ is adding at least one special function in this abstract base class and that is called a pure virtual function okay so you can already guess that in virtual function there was a word virtual that would be the case here as well but what makes it pure it makes it pure that pure virtual functions only have header and no body and we're going to show syntax very very shortly <clears throat> but there is one more okay maybe i can show you syntax right away and come back to this pure virtual functions written like this virtual function return type function name could have argument list here i didn't put any arguments equals zero now that's a strange syntax but that's how in the base abstract class pure virtual functions are written like this any class having at least one pure virtual function becomes an abstract class an abstract class cannot be instantiated syntax of writing an abstract class will be something like this class foo public virtual int get age equals zero and there might be more functions virtual pure virtual virtual or non virtual okay abstract class can contain all three they can actually even contain data but we are not focusing on that right now but abstract classes can have regular functions virtual functions pure virtual function this is the example of pure virtual function okay okay let's get back to this now classes that derive from an abstract class should have full implementation of pure virtual function in its parent class otherwise they will become abstract as well okay so here's the important point if i derive from door a class called car door and door has pure virtual functions then car door will have to give body to that instantiate uh, implement them completely otherwise you cannot instantiate car door either and we'll see that when we do the code in the next video okay so <clears throat> inheritance diagram for deriving from abstract class or any other class for that matter might look like this here's the door which will have two pure virtual functions open and close and all these car all these doors classes are deriving from that car door house door garage door french door i can add one more bank vault door and now i'm just going to quickly before proceeding to next video i'm just going to quickly write the door class code it will look like this okay maybe i need bigger font so that you can see it clearly class okay maybe i should start door and i want two pure virtual function in this public vo uh, <coughs> virtual 
has to be first word would open and you have option to put a const at the end or not equals zero. I got my first pure virtual function. Equals zero means it has no body in this class and child class will override it and I'll get the other pure virtual function close <coughs> the class will need a constructor I'm not gonna not gonna write it right now but it will and when I do the full code in the next video I will show you everything and <clears throat> we will drive all these classes car door house door garage door French door from this class inherit from this class that will make sure that all these classes provide full body for these two functions otherwise they will become abstract and cannot be instantiated okay so in this video I'm just going to stop here and next video I'm going to show you the code and the related items for inheriting from this abstract class thank you so much.